Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy right now, as well as the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. DWAC stock recently jumped by 35.22%, up to $49.95 per share. This is because digital World Acquisition Corporation, which is a shell company that's merging with Donald Trump's Truth Social, will begin trading under the new ticker symbol DJT, and it has done just that, and investors have been flooding into the stock. However, before you make any investment decision, always make sure to do your own research. For me personally, this company has jumped in their share price very aggressively in a short amount of time, which means that I anticipate a pullback. So, if you end up researching this company and looking further into them, and you decide to invest into them, please be wary of that pullback, and honestly, just invest once this company actually pulls back in their share price. So, I would love to hear your thoughts down below about that stock. But now, let's move on to Boeing, ticker symbol BA. Boeing is both a government contractor and an aircraft manufacturer, which I personally hold in my portfolio. And if you've been following along, you've known that Boeing has received a lot of negative news updates, which is pushing their share price lower and lower. And to me, this gives us as investors a great buying opportunity. So let's discuss the latest news update in regards to Boeing. Recently, Boeing's CEO said he's going to leave the company by the end of the year. And he's not alone. Because Boeing's commercial aviation chief actually left the company immediately after that announcement. You should also know that Boeing's board chairman will not seek re-election later this year, and he is going to be replaced by the former Qualcomm CEO. The reason why Boeing is making these changes is because all of these negative news stories that are coming out about the company has forced Boeing to make these changes. Now we see Boeing revamping their safety processes as it faces a large chorus of critics and criticism while their executives end up having to deal with this scrutiny head on. And that's why their executives and board will meet with the very worried airlines who use Boeing's aircrafts. Due to Boeing aircrafts having this very negative publicity in regards to their overall safety and by Boeing implementing these new safety processes, this is actually delaying the production of a lot of these aircrafts, which means that airlines are not receiving these aircrafts to put people on, which is costing them money. As of right now, Boeing is on track to lose up to $4.5 billion this quarter alone, which is clearly negatively impacting this company, and it's also negatively impacting airlines, which they do business with. In my personal opinion, this is the best time to buy fundamentally solid companies, and as this negative news pushes their share price lower, ticker symbol BA, I am going to continuously buy this company up, but always make sure to do your own research because this is a very risky strategy that I am implementing right now. In other stock news, let's look at the general stock market, because we see the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones all go lower today. But don't let that get you down, because investors who invested into DWAC, which is now Truth Social, are up massively, considering that the company is now trading at around $57.99 per share, which is a huge increase as you just saw from our our last news update. But like we said, always make sure to do your own research before you decide to invest into any of these companies. Next up, let's talk about Visa and MasterCard, which recently agreed to a $30 billion deal to cap swiping fees. For context, both Visa and MasterCard are credit card companies and they are also credit processors. And after nearly 20 years of legal battles, both of these credit card behemoths said that they will slightly reduce their 2% fee that they charge to retailers every time a customer uses one of their credit cards. Now the interesting thing here is that this will not necessarily impact Visa and MasterCard very much, but it will impact banks such as JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Bank of America. The reason for this is because these banks who issue these credit cards from Visa and MasterCard will actually feel the brunt of this change because they typically receive the majority of the revenue from these swiping fees. Therefore, we could see this cut into the revenues of JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Bank of America instead of it really cutting in to the revenues of Visa and MasterCard. But that will not stop me from investing into Visa, MasterCard, JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, or Bank of America. I personally hold all of these companies in my personal portfolio to where I really like Visa, JP Morgan Chase, and Bank of America, and then I like MasterCard, and then last would be Citigroup. But I would love to hear your thoughts down below if you hold any of those companies in your personal portfolio. Next up, let's talk about McDonald's, which owns and operates a very successful fast food chain. The reason why McDonald's is in the news is because they will soon 
sell the three most popular donuts from a Krispy Kreme across all of their US locations. That means that McDonald's plans to offer these donuts at all of their approximately 13,500 US locations, which should also uplift their coffee business. Krispy Kreme donuts should sell at the McDonald's near you if you are in the United States by the end of 2026, or preferably sooner than that, because by the end of 2026, this should be fully implemented across all of their locations. On top of that, this deal is also great for Krispy Kreme, ticker symbol D-N-U-T, because it's going to double the amount of locations in which Krispy Kreme donuts are sold. And this is why the D-N-U-T stock price surged by 40%, and for good reason. This is why it would be wise for investors to invest into McDonald's stock as well as Krispy Kreme stock, ticker symbol DNUT, because it could give them a huge payoff. However, at the end of the day, this is a great partnership for both McDonald's as well as Krispy Kreme, so I thought you should be aware of this. Last up for our news updates, let's talk about Disney and Hulu. Disney is a giant entertainment company which has a lot of intellectual property, and recently their streaming service named Disney Plus changed their logo. Disney Plus changed their logo to make it look more like Hulu's logo, which is another streaming service, because these two streaming services are actually prepared to merge into one streaming service. Therefore, this is a very good development in Disney's DIS stock, so for investors, at minimum add this company to a watch list, or if you're like me, I've been buying into this company right now because Disney is making a lot of good moves from a corporate perspective. However, Disney is struggling with their public relations because of the types of movies they are producing recently, but I'm going to leave that decision up to you whether or not you want to invest into this company or not, and I would love to hear your thoughts down below about if you hold DIS stock in your personal portfolio. Now let's talk about some of the best stocks to buy, starting off with ticker symbol AMKBY. If you didn't know, a huge cargo ship recently struck the Baltimore bridge, which was used by 30,000 commuters. And as of right now, there have been six people who were presumed deceased. And this massive cargo ship was owned by a company whose ticker symbol is AMKBY, and it is plummeting right now. However, this company does have an extremely strong dividend, and after this negative PR wears off, this company will be trading at a very cheap share price, which makes it a great buying opportunity for investors. Negative news updates can sometimes give investors a fantastic a buying opportunity, and that's exactly what we are seeing right now for AMKBY stock. As the share price drops lower, investors are going to get a better and better buying opportunity to get into this company. On top of that, this company has a very impressive dividend at over a 34% yield. So I would highly recommend you look further into this company, and it is terrible what has happened with their massive cargo ship. However, this was not the company's fault. If anything, it was the driver's fault. But overall, this was a pretty bad situation, so I would love to hear your thoughts about this down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about a data warehouse company named Snowflake, ticker symbol S-N-O-W, ticker name Snow. For context, I personally hold Snowflake shares in my portfolio, but I'm waiting for this company to drop lower in their share price before I jump in and buy more. However, recently, their CEO believes that the company is perfectly priced right now, considering that he purchased around 31,542 shares of this company at a share price of $158.52 per share, which means that this purchase was worth around $5 million in total. Therefore, this was great news. However, there is a problem here, because over the past three months, there has been a total of 63 insiders selling this company and 14 buying into this company. So let's talk about how much stock they actually bought and sold. Recently, insiders have bought around 496,428 shares, so just under half a million shares. Meanwhile, other insiders have actually sold 855,637 shares. That means this purchase from the CEO was overshadowed over the last three months of insider selling activity. However, that does not mean that this is a bad company because fundamentally, I believe this company is very solid. You should also know that the CEO now owns 224,181 shares of this company, which is a great sign. When a lot of insiders own a lot of shares within the company that they operate, this is normally a very positive sign because in general, they believe that the future share price will be higher than their current share price, so it encourages them to hold on to their shares. There could be a plethora of reasons about why insiders would sell 
sell their shares. But normally there's only one good reason about why they would buy shares, and that's because they believe the company's future is going to be very successful. So I would love to hear your thoughts about Snowflake down below in the comments and whether or not you personally hold them in your portfolio, because I certainly do. Next up, let's talk about QuantumScape, ticker symbol QS, which has jumped in their share price by around 8.17%. And for context, I personally do not hold this company in my portfolio because I think they are too risky. But don't let that dissuade you. For context, QuantumScape wants to revolutionize the electric vehicle battery charging experience. Essentially, their batteries will allow electric vehicles to go for a longer range and last for a longer period of time. This is why QuantumScape is developing solid state battery technology, which could address range anxiety that people who buy EVs normally face. And recently, this company had a breakthrough in regards to commercializing their batteries. And that's why this company's share price recently jumped. If you didn't know, electric vehicles normally utilize lithium ion batteries, which use graphite anodes. And although this gets the job done, this does give a limitation of low energy density, which limits the range of the electric vehicle. That's where QuantumScape comes in, because they want to increase the density of these EV batteries, which will make the vehicle go for longer ranges. And recently, they have began low volume production of its first full commercial product known as the QSE-5 battery cell. Therefore, this company looks like they are setting themselves up for success, but for me, I would love for this company to land major contracts with very high profile EV companies, and then that would encourage me to invest into this company. I really like how this article ends this story, because it says, and I quote, for investors comfortable speculating on its ultimate success, today's news was another welcome milestone. This year could be a transformative one for the company and its goals, but investors should still allocate funds realizing there remains plenty of risk that it won't ultimately succeed or be the first to market. In a nutshell, the author is saying that yes, this company could be extremely successful, but there is still plenty of risk here, and that's why I would always encourage you to do your own research before you make any investment decision. I'm just here to give you information, and it's up to you to do what you want with that information in regards to buying and selling these stocks. Next up, let's talk about UPS, which is the United Parcel Service, which is mainly responsible for delivering packages. The reason why UPS is in the news is because they recently released their new three-year targets. UPS is a shipping giant, except investors right now are very worried about the general economy and how this will negatively impact the United Parcel Service. Luckily, the CEO came out with some statements to calm investors' fears by saying this. We have really come together because we have a clarity of strategic direction and we are all aligned. So with this new alignment, it seems that this company should get back on track. If you didn't know, this company was doing great back in 2022, where their operating profit margins increased by 4% compared to what they were in 2020, hitting almost 14%, while their sales topped $100 billion. Sadly, everything changed in 2023 to where their revenue came in at $91 billion, which was a far cry compared to what they brought in back in 2022, considering they brought in $100 billion back then. So their revenue clearly declined. To make matters even worse, they only brought in around $9.9 .9 billion worth of operating income, which severely missed their goal of $14 billion worth of operating income. However, we do have good news here, because recently on a call, they released their 2026 sales targets. UPS believes that they will achieve $111 billion worth of sales, which beats Wall Street consensus estimates coming in at only $101 billion. So this is great news. On top of that, their operating profit margins in 2026 should be greater than 13%, implying an operating profit of around $14.5 billion, which again beats analysts' estimates, which only came in at around $12 billion. Now, what I find interesting is that despite this great news, their share price dropped by around 8.2%, which in my opinion gives investors a good buying opportunity. An analyst also recently gave them a buy rating and a price target of $182 per share over the next 12 months, and considering that the company is only trading at $145 per share right now, there is still further upside left in this company, let alone upside over the next three years. So again, this is a really good stock to buy, but always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. Now let's talk about the electric vehicle company located over in China named NIO, ticker symbol NIO. Recently, NIO's share price 
price dropped by 7% because the company lowered their first quarter delivery estimates. For some background, NIO originally told investors that they plan to ship around 33,000 vehicles in the first quarter. However, recently they actually readjusted this numbers and now expect to only ship around 30,000 units. To make matters even worse, NEO shares are down around 50% over the last year, so this company is not doing very well right now. Now, NEO does have a home field advantage, considering that they are located in the world's largest EV market over in China, and on top of that, they are also expanding further into Europe. Currently, NEO is relying on their home market growing rapidly over in China, so they can continuously infiltrate Western nations. However, the problem that NEO and other EV manufacturers are facing right now is a huge lull in demand in regards to electric vehicles. People just aren't buying them like they used to. This is why automakers are continuously slashing their prices for electric vehicles so they can try to bolster demand by giving customers cheaper prices. Now, although this sounds like bad news, and it is to some degree, there are still pretty bullish analysts surrounding this company. As an example, one analyst and financial reporter actually increased his price target on this company and increased his rating. And then another analyst from Citigroup actually still sees 27% of New Year car sales over in China being all electric throughout the year of 2024. And that means this is a good development for NEO and other EV makers located over in China. I think the author sums up the article well by saying, for those who believe the runway for adoption remains long, investing in NEO and other EV makers could make sense. But the risk of being wrong should also play a role in how much you want to risk in a still evolving new market, end quote. And I completely agree with this because you should only invest what you are willing to lose, especially in such a risky newer market. For me personally, I think there are better EV makers out there, such as Tesla and even BYD, but always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories. And with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.